uh, Chairman Westerfield, Chairman Tilly. For the record, my name is Reverend Patrick Delahanty. I am the chairperson of the Kentucky Coalition to Abolish the Death Penalty, and I thank you and all members of the committee for this chance to speak. KCADP is a coalition of organizations like the ACLU, the Catholic Conference, the Council of Churches, the NAACP, and others. We are also thousands of individual Kentuckians. For example, Ollie McGregor lives in Harlan and attends the Church of God. She says, I do not believe in the death penalty because of religion for one thing. And the other thing is, once you kill them, they're not paying any price for what they've done. I think they need to be kept in prison so they can pay for whatever they've done. Tulio Torino served in Iraq and Afghanistan. He's a police officer in Louisville and writes, as a police officer, I see all human life as a sacred gift because protecting life is my greatest responsibility. I only wish others would view the sacredness of life as I do, as God does, as a truly just society would when they refuse to succumb to the evil of taking another person's life, no matter how deserving we might believe they are of death. Former Commonwealth Attorney for Boyd County, Stu Snyder, was confronted with a case eligible for the death penalty. My job would be to use the skills I had developed over a quarter of a century and convince 12 people to order a death sentence, he said. I couldn't see a way to follow the law and still be fair to my understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stu supports repeal. Retired Circuit Court Judge Steve Ryan imposed death sentences in two cases. This experience caused him concern about the cost of the process. As a judge, we'd spend a week picking a jury for a death penalty trial and then spend so much on the resources for the public defenders and lawyers and then the appeals start. Death row is a waste of resources. Jane Childs, Carol Heilman, and Nancy Rouse share at least three things. All three have testified before this Judiciary Committee. All three lost loved ones to murder. All three asked that you repeal the death penalty. About her brother's killer, Rouse said, if he had been put to death, you would have had other people who have lost someone too, essentially to murder. There are a lot of innocent people. His former wife is innocent, his children are innocent, and his girlfriend and baby were innocent. If I'm suffering, if I'm in pain, I feel that pain. But I'm not going to be consoled if someone else feels the same pain. Why should other people be punished because I have lost my cherished brother? Kentuckians want a system that holds people accountable for the harm they do to others without risking the execution of the innocent. Many Kentuckians will agree with Jay Sekulow. Conservatives should question how the death penalty actually works in order to stay true to small government, reduction in wasteful spending, and respect for human life. And the one thing my faith teaches me, I don't get to play God. I think you are shortcutting the whole process of redemption. This issue has touched the life of Ben Griffith, the secretary of our board, in a way we all hope would never happen to anyone, and he speaks with a wisdom that bears our heeding. Thank you. I'd like to put that on. <coughs> I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the committee for this consideration. My name is Ben Griffith. I'm secretary of the KCADP. I'm a husband. I'm a father of two Kentucky-born women and I have called Kentucky my home for a little over 40 years. And more importantly to this hearing, I'm a member of a club nobody wants to belong to. I'm a murder victim family member. As I have traveled around speaking to church groups and schools and civic groups, I've also participated in a national tour of murder victim families who speaking out against the death penalty. I usually start my talk with a somewhat brutal account of my brother Chris's murder on September 9, 1986. Here's the short version. Chris and a co-worker stumbled upon a double murder scene in rural Sweet Springs, Missouri. Before Chris had exited his car and shut the door, his companion was shot in the head. Chris started to run away, was shot twice in the back as he was running. 
until he leaned up against a tree where a third bullet was put to his head. His murderer did not personally know any of his victims. There was no clear motive for his actions other than he had lost his mental balance. He had alcohol problems, troubles with his family life, and he had just been given the pink slip at work. It took one week of a police investigation to arrest Donald Reese. He confessed, led the police to the river where he had thrown away the murder weapon and it was recovered. By May of 1987, he was found guilty of murder of my brother and his co-worker. One month later, in the sentencing phase of this trial, Donald Reese was sentenced to death for the murder of my brother's co-worker. The judge gave Donald Reese life without parole for the murder of Chris. You see, after the trial phase, my parents came out publicly with a letter to the judge. They documented Chris's belief in nonviolence and made a plea on his behalf not to issue the death penalty. In a somewhat hollow victory, the judge noted publicly the difficult issues surrounding the state taking another human being's life. And because of my parents' letter, they reduced the sentence in Chris's murder to life without parole. In August of 1997, just one month short of 11 years after Donald Reese murdered four people, the state of Missouri executed Donald Reese. Comparatively speaking, that's a fairly rapid route from arrest to execution. And to tell you the truth, I didn't feel any sadness in me when I knew that Donald Reese had died. I felt emptiness and I felt loss. I tried to remember how well my brother had lived his life and to think good thoughts. But in Reese's death, I was victimized yet once again. Any assumption that all family members of murder victims want more killing is simply not true. I belong to two organizations with thousands of members who feel otherwise. We do not want more killing done in our name when a death penalty is served despite our wishes, we feel wronged again. To assume that executions bring closure to all families is simply not true. In my own family, I had two pro-death penalty brothers who have now shifted their position. They saw what the long and protracted legal process brought to all of our family, which was anxiousness, unsettled wondering, not a day going by in those 11 years when some part of our lives were not in our control, but in the hands of lawyers, judges, and the law. The process is just simply too long for families. It isn't healthy. In fact, there's mounting evidence that families who go through the state systems where life without parole is the ultimate penalty are statistically healthier than those who go through the process in states that have the death penalty. A recent impact study published in the fall of 2012 by the Mar Marquette Law Review cites a study st comparing family survivors in Minnesota to those in Texas. Across the board, social emotional health of those families in Minnesota were better than their counterparts in Texas. And the reason is simple. Decades of appeals followed by the execution is not healthy for families. Even those family members who are ardent supporters of the death penalty pay a decades-long psychological price. That results in depression, major illnesses, more problems within family relationships, a reported lower quality of life, and a lower trust in others and the legal system. If the Commonwealth wants to take the best interest of family members to heart, life without parole is the better option. The appeals process averages two years or less in states life without parole. This enables family members to get on with normal life much sooner than their counterparts who live in states with the death penalty. Maybe some of the money we can save by abolishing the death penalty can actually help family members receive the counseling and trauma treatment that can help and cope with the loss. Thank you.